Welcome. Let's talk a little bit about error handling and errors in Go. Um, Go handles errors slightly differently than some other programming languages and it doesn't have exceptions. But you can emulate exceptions using a checked errors. Um, so let's, let's have a look how it is organized. Um, the fundamental construct is an error, which is effectively an interface. Um, so anything, any data structure that implements that interface will be fine as a substitute for the errors that uh, you want to use in your application. Uh, the only requirement is that um, it needs to have a method called error, capital E, which returns a string. The trivial implementation of the error is backed by a simple string and it's a non-exported error string uh, type which is inside the errors package. So if you are using errors.new this is kind of like a trivial implementation of the um, of the standard error. So I will try to um, explain the concepts using a simple implementation of um, a student system which will have two types two types of errors. So let's say we have um, a student type um, which is a struct which has a name which is a string and an h which is an int and let's imagine that we have some storage where we will store the uh, the students in. So in our case, we will have a function. Um, yep. So let's consider a function which will allow us to add a student. And that function returns an error. Um, and let's assume, um, okay, so let's assume um, if, if uh, sh is more than an arbitrary number, let's say 30, uh, we will return, return an error um, that indicates that student is too old, okay? And let's have another situation where if we have already, um, I don't, um, another error could be if we have, um, so if, student with a given name is already stored. We want to return an error, error indicating duplicate entry. Okay, so otherwise we will just store the student. So if, yeah, let's, let's have some simple, um, Let's have a simple storage based on a slice. So let's have um, something like, um, yeah, let's call it DB of students. And we, um, yeah, so let's have a map between the student name and the student entry so we can check for the for the duplicate entry so if um if everything is okay we will basically say db of s dot name is s okay uh, and then we will return return null so if everything is okay, we are returning empty error. 
and then we have to deal with those two situations uh, and then we will have a main function in which we will check so we will create a student um, student one which will be student um, home and this student is say too old so let's say it's 40 and then we will try to add student yeah let's call him Tom okay and then we are getting error back and now we would like to do something with the with the error so handle error depending on what it is okay so a trivial um, implementation which we could do is we basically would say um, errors new uh, student to old okay and then if we have the second case so we have to check um, so we will say okay equals um, we can ignore the value and we will check if the DB has um, the S name yep and then if not okay we should return return again errors.new saying duplicate entry okay and this works we can print this Print. Yeah, uh, we got an an error, error, error. But handling so handling it depending on which error we are getting. So if Tom is too old, we getting one error, um, and then. Let's have another Tom tool, which is a student All right, so let's do uh, Alice. Alice is fine. Let's add our add student Alice and now we expect error to be empty but in case it's not um, yeah let's print we will not check for the error just print um, adding Alice should get an empty error Actually, say got an empty error. So if error is empty, we got this. All right, so why are we not redefining the error? Okay, so let's, let's check how it works. Go run example go. And we uh, we got an error student to old, um, which is this with Alice. Uh, we haven't printed that, which means we got 
summer. So let's also print that to see what happened. Okay. Let's see. We got a duplicate entry. Why? Uh, okay, so let's test this. Uh, first, uh, let's see. I need to make um, db is make um, it's a map student and we can initiate it with a size but let's check this so we have a storage we creating a new student which is too old we should have an error then we print this then we're creating Alice which is fine we adding Alice we should have no error um, and we will try to add Alice again so let's see error equals at student Alice and now we should have an error saying um, adding Alice twice got an error All right so let's see if this works perfect so we have an empty error the error is nil for adding Alice the first time and we have the uh, duplicate entry when we adding the uh, Alice second time so we have a, a very basic skeleton with a default um, implementation of the error uh, returned from our method uh, and you know we are returning error and we are reading error from calling this method the problem is with this implementation <coughs> that we cannot really um, distinguish between the errors so if we were to handle different errors different ways um, we can't really tell so at this point when we getting Tom we actually don't know um which error is which right um so we know that we got an error we don't know whether tom was already there or whether tom is too old so our task now is to change this in such a way that we can we can uh, have the behavior dependent on the type of the error how can we do that all right so there, there are uh, two types of um, um, errors in, in Go. Uh, ones are based on the value, the other ones are based on the type. So we can... Um, yes, so it just a, a short uh, site uh, example. Um, we can use the new as we just did in the um, in our generation of errors, uh, so we can use the package errors and call new. Um, but often we would like to um, uh, format the the error string in an appropriate way. So here is a simple example where we have some sort of file. We have a line number and we would like to say, okay, there is a problem with this file with this line number, right? So we're using a sprintf to format our string and generate the error. So if we run this code, it prints the error, which is compile problem with a file with that line, right? So we have kind of a nicely formatted error um, text, but using sprintf and errors new, can be simplified by using format error f 
Um, so RF is a convenience method which basically does the same thing in a single line of code. So we can format and generate the error in a single uh, line of code. So we can use um, format error f to construct our errors. And errors by value are present in the Go runtime system. So we have a number of uh, examples like um, in the OS package and an HTTP package. So if I uh, go to godoc and go and search for HTTP package, I can go here and you could see that the way HTTP um, constructs the errors is by having a variables, which are, for example, error right after flash, and there is an errors the new command which creates this variable and then the methods are kind of using to re in, in case of error erroneous situation they will return this value uh, and then the code which is using the the errors can compare if this is the the error that we got right so if we use the same mechanism uh, what we can do here is we can declare um, we can declare our two errors. So I will use the same convention as uh, in the HTTP package. So we'll have one error called um, to old, and it will be basically um, yeah, let's have a peek um, errors new and we can say student to old right and then we can have another error error uh, duplicate entry and then we have this line and we will do this and now instead of generating new errors every time the error, error situation happens, we basically say return to old or return duplicate entry. So now if we do this, uh, what we can do here is we can add Tom and then when we get the error, we can check if error is um, error to old, we can do particular behavior, else if uh, error is, so in fact, we could use a switch statement, right? So we can say uh, switch error case to old do something or case error duplicate entry do something else and then it simplifies the handling so now we can say uh, format print toms to old and print tom is already in db. All right. So the same situation is with um, with Alice. So we can basically do the same. Um, yeah, so let's say we add Alice once and we double check that it's the error. There is no error. And then when we add Alice second time, we do this to check. Okay, 
So now we implemented a simple value-based error handling. We de declared two types of errors that we export outside and our method, yeah, let's make it exported as well. So whoever is using our method from outside can, um, can check the errors that we're returning and compare to the errors that we have in the package. And we um, can dispatch depending on the error on how to behave, how, how to handle it. So if I go to here and run the example, we say, okay, Tom's too old and Alice error is empty and um, we, yeah, we printing Alice, Alice is too old, right? So make sure that it, it is correct. So Tom's too old, adding Alice should be an empty and Alice is already in DB when we try to add it second time. So now let's say I will um, change Tom's age to be not too old and I will try to add Tom twice. So the first time Tom is added, there should be no error. The second time we will have an error. So now if I rerun this, Tom originally was too old, but now Tom should not be too old. Tom should be already in the DB. Perfect. So what else can we do? Um, as you see here, it's a little bit not nice that I have to repeat that piece of code twice, right? So let's have a function that will, let's call error handler, which will take an error. Uh, let's call the error error. And then what I can do is I can take this and I can say, uh, student to old, student is already in the DB. Uh, and instead of doing it like this, I just say error handler error. All right, and the same here. Error handler. All right, let's rerun it. It works exactly the same, but I lost the ability to, to say Tom or Alice, right? Um, so let's get rid of this part as well. We know that the first adding of Alice is uh, is clean. All right, so again, if I just for consistency sake uh, edit, I have, okay, I've been adding Tom twice and adding Alice twice. Let's go back to adding Tom once, but Tom is too old. So Tom is now too old and we adding Alice twice, we have this situation. Um, okay, what was the too old thing? Has to be more than 30, so oh, 31. So student is too old and student is already in the DB but I, I kind of lost a little bit of a context. I don't know which one, right? Um, so how can we improve our current design so we pass a little bit of a context to the error? Um, well, we can, um, we can use um, type as values but we can also use um, types as uh, errors as types, 
right? So again, we have example of that. We have an example in the OS package, for example, the path error or syscall error. They, um, they are structs. Um, so in, in here, we using the, um, the errors as, as variables. Um, so we, we declared some variables, some, um, which represent our error type, but it's not really a type. It's just a value. It's a, it's a variable which holds a, you know, a, an instance of an error, right? When we look into the OS path, for example, we see that the path is a struct which contains some context for me and then the error of what went wrong. So using that metaphor, um, I can create, um, in my implementation, I can create a student error. So let's say we have, um, we have a type, which is a student error. And this student error is a struct, which has, um, which has, uh, let's say, we only want to store the name of the student with co which caused the error, right? So let's have a um, uh, name, which is a string. And then we will have the error, which is the actual error. Okay. So now all my, um, uh, all my errors from the method, I would like them to be of a particular type, which is a student error. Um, and I would like to store um, a context of what caused the error to, to happen. For the student error to be properly an error, if you have a look here, I have to have um, uh, the reference type uh, to, read, to be able to handle the error message, right? So a path error is an error that has, that fulfills the requirement of being an error by having the method error returning a string. So we have to do the same here. Um, so we have to have a function, which is a student error, um, student error. And I have to have a method which returns a string. And now it's up to me of what that would be. But um, in our case, what we would like to do is we would like to concatenate the name with the error. So we would like to return um, the name plus um, the error. And we will take it from here and we'll take it from here. All right, so now um, instead of throwing an error, which is just an error, what I can do is I can say, okay, um, if the student is too old, I can throw uh, a new student error, which has um, the name of the student, which is the student name, and the error, which is the actual error, which says, uh, you know, too old. Um, need to do the reference type. And then for duplicate entry, we do the same. So we will return um, a student error, which um, will have the uh, name of the student and the duplicate entry. So now, uh, when I have my error handler, I can do a switch on the type of the error, right? So what I can do is I can say, 
if error type is um, case student error, then I then I do certain thing. Yeah, I need to have. Um, let me see. Okay. And then the default case. Yeah, in the default case, we will be dealing with the um, so if error is of a student error type, then I have the name and um, the actual error to my disposal, right? So what I can do is I can say, I can say this error uh, name plus is too old. Um, right. So yeah, we do have the name, but the actual printing has to happen based on the uh, the actual error that we have. Right. So let's let's do this. We will um, we will print the name plus the actual error message of the um yes what we need really is um let's say we really want to return a string from the handler so instead of printing we just want to return it so what we will do is we will return return name plus this plus again we will um, error handle on the on the error error and then the default behavior will be this Um, so error is of type error and we will say um, switch on error and return to old or return and so don't say student say too old and say already in DB right so let's see the formatting right I am missing some braces so this is here this is here. This is back to the. This is back to this, and this one doesn't have uh, the default case. So we still need a default, which we will just return error. Error. Excellent. So now, um, okay, we have uh, one more problem here. So let 
that's not working. Uh, yes, uh, we need to have the uh, casted error. And then we can say casted error name and casted error. error. I'm not sure if that's uh, reference error or just error. Yeah, let's try this. So we have added uh, a typed error structure, which allows us to throw uh, additional information together with our error. So then we can have a more complex error handling. Let's see if this works. Sure. Um, so the error handler returns us a string now. So some text and then we will like to print it. So uh, let's just format print line this and it's the same here okay and let's try it impossible type switch case error type error cannot have dynamic type yes okay so it has to be this. So now we know Tom is too old and Alice is already in the DB. So instead of having a cryptic handling of error messages which don't know who caused the particular exception or error, uh, now we have a very descriptive and contextualized error handler which knows in which context a particular problem happened. So we kept the, the values for the errors, like you know somebody being too old and somebody being um, um, you know about the duplicate entry. But when we throwing the exception, or we throwing the error, we now have an ability to store a little bit of a context not only to have the error but also to have a, a little bit of a context of how you know how the error was generated which allows us to have a more complex type based uh, error checking for the errors and then if the error is of a student error type we know that we have the name and the error if the error is generic then we just uh, check if we have it equal to our two known types and then print a, a, you know according message and then the, the default case is just we handle um, as opaque uh, error so this is how we can use um, error types and error values in our program so what you should um, avoid is when you catch an error uh, so imagine that we have um, one method throwing an error and then we are pa you know doing something up and throwing an error again so you should not throw a new error uh, if you um, if you're throwing an error in your processor um, and the you know, IO util caused particular error. You should not generate a new error just by forcing a string into be a more complex string. You should try to retain the hierarchy of the errors. So you should use the ROP um, uh, method inside the errors package. So then you can have a new error generated based on the old error and the new description. So the new description is here but we are retaining the actual type um, of the original cause of this error that we are generating now. Why? Because then when we get this error from our process, 
uh, we and it's not null, we can actually get the cause. We can check what caused that that error and then you know do something depend um, depended on the on the cause, right? So to sum up, um, we discuss the errors as um, as values, and we discuss the errors as type, and we provided a generic example of how we can handle um, how we can generate errors in our methods um, and return them, and then how can we use the values and the error type um, to handle the errors based on the type or based on the values. Uh, make a note that the standard uh, pattern in, in Go is to name the errors as values with the prefix of ERR. And then if we're using a type, uh, we usually have uh, an error as a suffix of the of the name. We did follow that, so we called our value type errors as err with particular semantics, and then we did called our student error as, uh, as you know as a postfix with the fully uh, spelled error. So that's it. Uh, I hope it explains and give gives you. Um, the ideas of how to deal uh, with errors in your program and in the assignment two and assignment three to improve the code quality of your own implementations. So thank you.